Hello, uh, survivors of the apocalypse. Uh, welcome back to Atom RPG and playing hardball. We have a new team member, and we have helped the mayor in Otrad Neue significantly with his car already, and that is the next thing that we are going to do. So, our new team member Alexander, I gave him some stuff uh, and leveled him. Look, Jolba is sniffing on his leg. Well, and the thing is, I mean, does he really have the warm in his head or is he just making crap up? <laughs> That's, that is the real question. Um, so, let's have a look. What did I do? So, we remember he had a couple of levels that we could allocate. So, and he had a knack for martial arts because he already had these four perks here. The Way of the Warrior. And the waste is people quickly learn to use their fists as well as melee weapons. Then the master of dodging, which I personally like a lot, especially if you have a lot of action points. Armor's good, but avoiding to blow uh, the blow entirely is even better. Plus one dodge for every action point spent. And he had Sambo. A downed enemy is a dead enemy. Plus 10% to stun during close quarter combat. And then the adrenaline rush. In dangerous situations, time slows down for you. Or time slows for you when your health falls to half get two additional action points i probably wouldn't have invested into this one um but more like in the end of the line but we'll see how that goes yeah um so and i took this here the first blood well and he had i think he he had these two here and possibly even think like the enemy i'm not sure but we got him to Esperatorian. So he can wear the steel armor and well, once we get some better stuff, he can also wear that without uh, any penalty. Same goes for the helmet. Then I gave him the first blood, a guaranteed melee critical when drawing first blood in a fight. So his first attack will always be a crit. I think that's probably good, especially if uh, you just wait a few seconds to explain because yeah or you might have seen it already or noticed it so then we have the weak spot knowledge no matter size any enemy can be taken down if you know where to strike plus 10 percent to crits to critical and close quarter combat so basically like when i interpret close quarter combat like being melee and unarmed attack so and then he has quick reaction which is possibly the best in this whole uh this whole line of melee and unarmed fighting. Quick reaction, quicker reactions correlate directly to increased chance of survival. You now get two turns in every round of battle. The first with full AP, the second with 50% of your maximum AP. And he's got eight AP, yeah, which is actually not so much, but we are working on that one. Yeah, so that's what he has. Doesn't have these here. Also neither these, but I decided to give him also the nurse. And now he's got 10%, uh, 10 points health more. And the next two levels, when we get the next perk, I will give him the feeling good for even more health and one action point. And then with that, he has nine action points. And then the dodge is increased that way. Yeah. And well, I'm not sure if it rounds up or down. We'll see. Um, but I felt that that would be a good thing. And also, like being a primary melee fighter, uh, it's always good to be as quick as possible. Yeah, so that's the situation there. So, and then I allocated 120 points to martial arts. At 150, the person becomes a sensei. I'm not entirely certain what that means, but we are finding out in the next level. Or like, I'm not sure if we do it here, it doesn't doesn't happen uh, I'm, I don't want to fiddle around with it right now because um, I noticed I put everything into martial arts and then the sensei came uh, and when I uh, reduced this one back to 110 or something the sensei was here was still here so the, it was basically a bug yeah so I didn't I don't want to fiddle around with it too much so now he has 120 points martial arts why 120 because Alexander is going to use our boom glove that has a requirement of 110, so he's a bit above it. And that way, 
also with the auto crit, I think, and look at the damage potential, 23 to 36. I think that will be pretty nasty. And the crit chance is also significantly, uh, significantly increased with this one. So that should be pretty nice. Yeah. That's the situation there so far. Then. I increase pistols and SMGs to 80. Um, I mean, okay, it, it would also probably be good to have him use an AK or something, but I felt that he should have a decent SMG capability. Also, the, the value was uh, a bit higher than the other skills. Um, and also, like, think of the other guys, right? So, and then the thing is... Fidel, as we know, is our rifle guy, our sharpshooter, long-term sharpshooter. Hexogen is also martial arts specialist and automatic firearms, which we didn't use so far. We went for the SMG. However, now I have changed something because uh, what I want is actually that we don't use the same ammo so often. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why we, as our main character, we are using the hunting rifle. Where is it? Like here, yeah. The hunting rifle, because it sh shoots the 5.45 millimeter. Yeah. And then we can actually uh, switch. At some point, I think we can switch to the this light AK. There. The 5.45 cartridges. And then we can switch to another auto rifle. Uh, but at the at the moment we are only at 70 points with automatic rifles, so I feel that it's better to keep this one here. But I think we are not going higher than the 185 now. I think I even I overdid it already a bit. But well. So that's there. That's the situation there. And now Hexogen is actually using the AKMS. That's our modernized Kalashnikov assault rifle. Damage 8 to 22, stun chance 5. And this one uses also the 7.62 by 39 millimeter round. So basically the same ammo with, like Fidel, which I don't like very much. But the alternative, like with his SKS, he's not using up so much ammo which we can see because it really fills up a lot and also he goes once he's close to enemies uh, the tiger machete you know that's really a good thing to chop people uh, yeah that's that's why Fidel uh, is actually going into the melee weapon yeah once people are close up he's switching to melee that's that's the plan at least so and then uh, sorry and then hexogen Use this and just keeps the battle gauntlet, I think. So uh, I think it's actually better with him uh, having nine action points. So he has actually uh, up to three attacks with this one uh, instead of the, f the only two with the boom glove that uses up four action points. Yeah. While Alexander can only do two attacks anyway. Yeah. Per turn. With this one or with the battle gauntlet so yeah we'll re-evaluate this um, firstly after seeing him in battle a while for a while but also after uh, getting Alexander this one here the action point and then we'll see so that's the situation right now otherwise uh, Julba is well unchanged can't do much oh well He's, he's biting, yeah, the fatality master. Toasty, your all-out close combat assaults are so brutal they can literally cost your opponents not only their lives but even their limbs. That's the maximum. So, yeah. And I put some points into stealth, but Alexander is not the sneaky type, 55. So if someone is being hurt, then it's him. But I feel like, yeah, we are just like with every level, he gets 15 points. I guess we put five in each stat. Yeah, and then it's, I guess it's okay. Um, I also uh, repeated the conversation off camera. So we, uh, we explored basically 
all things, especially all that, that uh, gave us some extra experience. Um, uh, the extra, like like the personality stuff and so on. But you remember that we could have asked him uh, if he saw a doctor when when he said that the worm entered his ear and his, uh, ate half his brain. Uh, and actually, the guy uh, was actually wandering the wasteland. So he answered on that one uh, that he didn't trust all the doctors in the wasteland, and he actually visited all the. Villages. Otrad Neue, he knew about the doctor there in Paragon, then only the shamans down here in Fogolevka, and all alcoholic medical, the alcoholic medical staff in Krasnosnameni. That's why he never saw anybody. So we can't really be sure if he's just making this up because he seems to be a guy who likes a good prank. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. And then, uh, to have a final look at the equipment, so he's got the steel breastplate, I put the the good backpack this year to Fidel, so Fidel is carrying this stuff because, you know, I have to say I trust Fidel and Hexogen more, so Alexander needs to prove himself so he can wear this one, also I was thinking of having him use the shield actually there was also one thinking stream that I had like instead of uh, going too down, too far down here or something, or m well, maybe at some point we make him a shield bearer. I think that would actually be pretty good. Yeah, like a full melee guy. Um, and now we don't have any gunslinger stuff here. So, but my my long term plan would also be to make him, uh, you know, like a gunslinger with pistols maybe. Yeah, and then get the dexterity here which is uh, because he has dex 36 and then if we have this one on 7 he also gets more action points and therefore also more dodge yeah so and that's one of the reasons why in his inventory there's also the percussion revolver now and i just want to try it out with him a little bit uses the same ammo as the pps yeah and that's one of the reasons, and while the boom glove uses the 9mm rounds, that's one of the reasons why I try to uh, have everybody use a different type of ammo. Now Fidel and Hexogen have the same one, with the 7.62, but we have tr a tremendous amount of them already. Like we have in store, like we have around 250, 300 rounds more in store actually. How much was here in the trunk? Um. Yeah, 150. So, and we have around 200 or so uh, in our box over there. So, that's the situation right now. Now you're up to date. And, uh, yeah, I already milked the cows over here. Sasha seems to be not so motivated to work as a farmer, but Dunya is actually trying to motivate him. And we saw that there are some people. Uh, where are they? Oh, what? Where are they? What happened? What was that? Where are where are these guys? There were there were three people here. Did they vanish because I ended the game and uh, reloaded it? What? Where are they? Oh, come on! I want to try. I, I want to see this. Okay, guys. So I saved here, but then let's load, um, which is the one, here this one. So this is the one uh, before talking with him. Oh no, this is with him on the team already, right. So, and there were, th there were some people up here, there. Who are they and where did they go? I wonder. I wonder. So let's go there. Then this is like. Hey, huh? that's a bit weird. Yeah, this is before leveling him. So let's go here. I'm not doing anything now. Are they are they, are they scavengers or something? 
Hello there, guys, who are you? Before stands a man in a pre-war jacket sporting a gas mask. He holds onto the straps of his huge rucksack with one hand while playing with a rusty bull in the other. Uh, what are you doing here? If you got anything to sell, do it. If not, get out. Ah. Ah, well. So you guys don't happen to have a car... A carburetor or a starter for the ignition. We don't have anything. Maybe someone else was a tad more lucky. Pity. Okay, and then, well. Who are you people? We have the garbage collectors. Well, then, do you barter anything? Ah, oh, yeah, well. They only have two and six 9mm shots, though. Like the good, the big ones. 9 by uh, 3.39. Uh, okay, well. Yeah, okay, no, it doesn't matter. So let's load. I don't know why they why they are not uh, here anymore, but maybe after after a while of in-game time, uh, they left because obviously it took a while. Obviously it took a while to uh, to do the the leveling and fiddling around with the inventory and stuff. So well, anyway, let's Gavrilov. So what I want to do is finding uh, the we are we are going to cross um to do the the mission for the mayor in uh, Otrad Neue to get these car parks a uh, car car parts sorry um what is this uh yeah and then we have to deliver a head. Oh yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's get into the car. Starting the engine. And then we are driving to Otrad Neue. This is, it's daytime now. That's actually not so bad. So let's drive down there. There, entering. There was this shady character. Well, and we could actually get some merchandise out of the trunk. So, can sell. Let's let's keep a little bit of stuff. Um, yeah, brass knuckles. Just in case someone wants a certain type of item or something. Like there. But we are also collecting like really good stuff. There. Fidel gets one hunting rifle to sell. That's pretty expensive anyway. How about a rusty assault rifle? Rusty shotgun. Uh, yeah, let's have two. Who knows what we encounter? And then the bandit's head. The regular Nagant. And two rusty rifles. So, and then the helmet. This stuff. There, like so. Yeah. And no one is encumbered, right? No. Okay, good. Not even Alexander can carry all the armor. Okay, then. So. Good lady. You have any money? Yes, you do. That's good. M118 um, is not so much. Oh, Julba has one helmet in his mouth or jaws. Well, how about, lady, you could actually use some some knuckles, right? Like this here. So that. Or rather... It's actually... Oh, no. No, it's fine. Like this. Like this. She can use some knuckles. Some brass knuckles there, trading. 
goodbye just in case someone attacks her, right? Then the old lady takes on the brass knuckles and punches people in the face. Okay, he's also doing good. 136. Which means... Hmm... Well, I mean, we could actually use some corn meat, like, as a short, uh, short term solution. Or like 60. Yeah, that would work nicely enough, but how about a sharp knife? He only has one. Oh, that's too much. Okay, well then. So, some brass knuckles for this gentleman as well. There we go. Good. Yeah, and I felt a little bit bad um, about us uh, in this conversation with Alexander. About us not being so super polite to him. But yeah, I mean, of course, we were not very close and he's a bit weird. Makes jokes that our character here seems to have not enough humor for. So let's have a look. Okay, and we have those. Thank you very much, but no thanks. Is that guy? Is that the guy? We're not going to help the children of the North Kiosk. And yeah, what you want? Okay. Uh, then no thanks. So I wonder if, if something happens, if we give them uh, merchandise like in the worth of so and so much. Let's look at your wares, good man. Yeah, and also, oh yeah. So I was also thinking Oh yeah, we can definitely get this stuff here and maybe one because we used up one Maybe we should use some more. I mean, this is probably too much, but maybe four Oh, there's one thousand and maybe four here 950 and all his money That's 2900 Alexander. Oh, yeah. Wow the four that's not bad. Um, then 200. Uh, like so. Oh yeah. Let's have another one. And then even fi like around 50. Um, well, 60. Yeah, but I don't want anything else from him. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Just like this. One rubles. Sixty, yeah, well, we got rid of all the helmets and stuff already, so... Or we give him a good tip. That's also possible. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I gave uh, one good helmet to Alexander uh, because we want to try out something. I want to try out something. And um, because Alexander has the blue beret that gives plus one endurance, which is actually pretty good. And that way he has health 151. And if we take this one off, his health drops to 133. That's actually a significant increase. And then, uh, by the way, the red resistance increases with this thing for some reason. But if we look at the damage threshold, so the helmet should have 10% in 2. 37. Four. Oh no, okay. Damage threshold 5-3. Five one. Oh no, okay, yeah, that's a bit weird. It does work. So the big question is if this is better with the helmet or with the beret? That's the big question. Yeah. I mean he doesn't lose the dodge, that's the good thing. But the beret of course looks looks good on him. Yeah, that's the thing. So 
So I feel like the uh, the numbers they're not so super high. So I guess the blue beret is probably better for the moment. But once we get a, a, a better helmet like this one here, then obviously we give the better helmet to him. Did he say something? I didn't see it in time. Well, but you can click the pause button. Um, I would love to read all that, but well. So let's get over here because we can deliver the head over there at the militia captain. So, an hexogen should have a very high damage potential now uh, with the AK. And that's actually a weapon we want to use ourselves once we acquire the skill. While I feel that with this RPG, the light machine gun, you know, that would that would be awesome, but that thing shoots like always seven seven bullets per salvo, and uh, that is all a bit too much for our resources. So we've got business to discuss, Sir Sergei. Well, here's the head of Baruch Beakwing. You sure? I know this face. Good work. Here, 500 rubles. You've earned it. Fair and square. Glad to be of service. Let's change the subject. Do you have any other... ...bounties? Oh, well, yes. Since autumn, I'm looking forward to having the head of Chicha Chernyshenko from the group Children of War. Reason. Robbery is close to the place called Red Fighter. Oh, yeah. We accept the task because around Red Fighter, we want peace and quiet. Great, not many people are willing to take care of people like this scumbag, Chicha Chernyshenko. I expect to hear from you in four days. Don't be like other people in my life. Don't let me down. No, we won't. We'll report back to you when we are... When we've done it. When we've done the deed. So let's look here if he has something interesting. So, and I'm actually, as I said, I'm actually willing to buy the saber. But although now we are actually... Uh, we are not in a position oh, he still has the same stuff yeah and I'm never so sure if it's really if we really should stock up on ammo that much however yeah, 18 shots that's a lot with this rarer rifle round but well I think he had the the saber at some point but with the tiger machete, not sure if we still need that one or should like pay like 10,000 rubles for it or something. Because the the numbers, they are really good, this thing. Yeah, chance to ignore armor, 20% crit chance plus 10. 10% chance of causing panic. And that I can understand. So, are they talking? Boris? Is he hitting on Le Lena was her name or what? Oh, he, she doesn't have a name. She never told us her name, the lady. You see the lonely old man. Okay, do you have something? Well, you do. We could sell you another... Oh. Yeah, well, why not... Why not a throwing knife? You already have a sharp knife. So, how about that? You can make a knife collection and, like, see how the apple... Oh, what day is it, by the way? Is it Sunday? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Let's try something, guys. Saving. And now the lottery ticket. Liosha. Behind the old rickety tray stands a man <coughs> of solid build with shifty eyes and a fake grin plastered on his lean face. The man is eating sunflower seeds and periodically yelling advertisement slogans. When he sees us, he waits for us to come closer. We're drawing prizes today. If you have a ticket, feel free to show me your numbers. We'll see if you won on anything. Okay, then we'll see you later. Oh, I, th oh, I hoped that we could buy one now. Oh. Oh. Well, well. Well. Yeah, we, I, re I really want to do it, but I always was uh, kind of afraid that uh, that I would miss the the, the time. Which is a bit sad. Oh! And I forgot to put the milk out of the inventory. 
Then we do have one knife for her, or well, 115. Yeah, well, we've got lots of knives. And just in case, yeah, like the rabbit paw, that's my personal joke, my personal little joke here. Everybody has a rabbit paw. So Exogen, we give her one knife. I actually, we can give her two knives. Like so. She can also use a lot of knives. Like for cooking and chopping vegetables and stuff, that's good. Saw the coffee only in his store. Hey, there. Yeah, he's got 157. That's better. Um, he can have a triple barrel. There you go. That will make you feel much safer, buddy. Okay, so then. And then let's go over here. Oh, yeah, here. Gina. Hello there, familiar face, what do you want? Well, do you barter? Oh yeah, well... Hey, was he really uh, in the hospital? I mean, he looks like the guy from the hospital. But he's actually barefoot. Well, whatever. Have Dokim. The wide-shouldered, muscular man. A balding man of around 40 is walking around with the huge mermic. Ah, okay, it's the guy with the mermic. Okay. Yeah, he kind of. He never does anything. Oh, the general is gone. Well. So then let's barter here. Peter, do you have fresh money, friend? Heard anything interesting lately? That depends on what you find in this thing. Well, like money. And that looks pretty good. That looks like a... Oh, exactly the amount. Excellent. That looks like a leather armor. Very good. Very good indeed. Get it off here. Hey, Vaya. Still working for the casino, eh? So then, go here. You, good lady. Uh, uh, we, we just sold you some stuff. There. Good man has 201, that's even better. Um, but otherwise he doesn't have anything for us. That is of interest. But he actually can have one triple barrel as well. For his collection. That's not bad. Maybe he can reverse engineer this one. Thank you for the business. And then the milk merchant and the... Oh yeah, well, sorry. He also got that one. Good. And then here this gentleman. Hello there. Yep, long years of smoking. Produce that phase. 208. Um, that looks like one rifle. Okay, nearly at least. Uh, yeah, well, what the heck. Let's give him the... We'll take the waste paper. Then we make 100... Oh, 100... Well, it's directly... So we are making a, a plus of one ruble. Once we deliver the paper to the uh, journalists. And then you, good man. You again, comrade. Want some fish? Well, it depends. 155. Um, well, you surely can use some sharp knives. Yeah. And we don't have anything else anyway. So let's give you two knives. And actually three knives. Because you are the last person. Except for the doctors. That we can barter with. So there. Thank you. And then. We're going to the hospital. 
And from there we are going to uh, the hotel. Uh, that's here. Where we should find um, the guy. And then we can talk to him. So, hey there, Zana, how are you doing? Very well, I'm glad that you care. Well, and I do care deeply. However, you don't seem to get any salary, but you are kind of, you're getting more and more perfume there. The Naida. Hello, dog. Only 18? Well. No. Uh, just passing by, but thank you. There we see some fresh money and some fresh stimulants, but actually I think that we have so many. I, uh, by the way, I even put some away. So that's 21 and 100. Yeah, so like we are at around 250 stimulants now that, that we've collected so far. Um, ah, but now it's your time or no? Not yet. And how about one of these? 600. Your time for a nice... Well then, I think your time for a nice uh, shotgun has come then. Like this. That's better. There. That's much better. Thank you. Have a good day, dog. Yeah, he could play and like do exercises with the thorny armor and now he can uh, move up the food chain. Okay, and he doesn't have anything. Thank you. Have a nice day. So, all right, and now we can go to the hotel, which is here. Let's watch Alexander. I wonder why they always stop, but well. So we are here, quick saving, going in and then. For the first time we can speak with this guy. The huge guard notices us and blocks the door. You again, what now? Uh, listen here, monkey mouth. Flex at me and your chief over there will lose a big cash in opportunity. Yeah. None of your bees wax. Lead me to your boss. I've got a question for him. The name is Hotbalev and I have business with your boss. That's you streetwise. Easy there, gangster. Business is business. Just try acting a little less obnoxious. The chief, he doesn't like people who have a lot of moxie. And if he asks me, I'll screw your head right off. Don't stress, your mark. Everything is gonna go down smooth. Okay, well, so these guys, they are criminals, because otherwise he wouldn't have understood anything. A biscuit, and while we sneak in here, aha. A stick of dynamite. Exogen. Help yourself. So. The gentleman. Ah, yeah, Artyemyev. Before us sits a fat bloke in a crimson suit. He's studying a ledger from time to time. The man pouts and scratches his triple chin all while making some markings in the weather-beaten book. Hey, uh, are you Artemyev? I have business with you, man. Hey, you bloody jeezer. Hurt your work then. Fine as rights. Can you help a brother out with rusty set of wheels? <laughs> First, let's check. Ah, it doesn't bother. Okay. Yeah. So, streetwise. Artemyev lifts his head up and looks us over as if scanning our body. After that, he smiles. Learn those words from a dictionary. Speak like normal people, people you beggar. Don't tell me this bum beef, you bloody Jesus. They say I mix, I mix your dance on the blacktop. Now, we talking business or what? Artemyev looks at us with the same grin, but in his eyes we can now read pure malice. He walks to the door and calls his guard over. Bova, we have a big bad criminal over here. Show him his place and then bury him. Just don't make too much noise. Oh, 
Oh, oh, spaghetti oz. <laughs> what is that? Well, okay, that doesn't help us. So we are, well, we are running away. Oh, we can we, are they running actually? Stop, I love the city and its people. What, Fidel? Fidel is betraying the, the team. What, 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 what? Yeah, well. We didn't, we didn't want, we also, we wanted to run away, but well. Fidel, you traitor, but that's good to know. So here. Well, we are waiting until he notices. Oh, well, let's use the streetwise. Hey, you bloody geezer. I heard you worked on fine as rides. Can you help a brother out with his rusty set of wheels? Artemiev lifts his head up and looks us over as if scanning our body. After that, he smiles. Learn those words from a dictionary. Speak like normal people, you beggar. Well, pardon me, comrade Artemiev. It was a mistake. Fine, fine. Now, what did you want? Don't waste my time. Got it? Well, they say you can get all kinds of rare gadgets. Gadgets, is this true? And yeah, well, oh guys, let's let's uh, explore this one here. Detective Kovalev says hi. Upon us mentioning Kovalev, Artemiev changes in his eyes. Old hatred is reborn. A hidden malice he probably rarely shows. Are you messing with me, Kovalev? That bastard sends me his regards. Why, I, I. Get yourself together, man. I have nothing to do with your grudges. Calm down. I didn't mean to make you angry. No. We don't have anything to do with your grudges. Artemiev clenches and unclenches fists. His chest slowly and heavily lifts up and down. His nostrils grow ever wider like those of an angered beast. Fine, fine. You pass on the word. Now, what does he want? I need a start in a carburetor, not Kovalev. Kovalev just recommended you. I see how it is. Well, I've got what you need, but I will have to ask 7,000 for the carburetor and 10,000 for the starter. Oh, you could run some errands for me. Well, that is super expensive. I wonder if the price went up just by mentioning him. Uh, well... Work? What kind of work? I mean, we love work, right? Maybe we can also talk about a discount. Oh god, not that. Think about it yourself. Such money for parts I can buy from any scavenger. This is way too much. Yeah, indeed, right? Artemia fights it, but finally accepts the truth of our words. Fine, fine, I'll take off 4,000, which means I'll get the carburetor for 3,000 and the starter for 7,000, but this is my last offer. Well, that sounds better. Let's change the topic. Artemiev looks annoyed. He seems to want nothing but to return to suspicious machinations. So, you mentioned a job. What was that? First off, I need you to take care of a man, an independent goddamn journalist. He has some intel on me. He's hiding near Krasis Nameni. You need to find him and silence him. How you do it, I don't really care, but I need the deed done. The second job is a fair bit more interesting. Close to this town, there's this locked bunker. They say it was used for intercepting communications of supposed enemies of the state. There should be a gadget in this bunker called the 1C22 decoder. You don't need to know what it does. I just need you to fetch it for me. If you complete both tasks, you'll get your parts and more. One, any questions? Hope not. Um, what's that bunker story all about? That sounds actually super interesting. It's near Krasnsnameni in the mountains. There was a communications array there some time ago. Intercepted enemy signals and whatnot. You need to search that place for a decoder. Okay, that sounds doable. And, well, do we really have to kill the journalist? Maybe you don't need to kill him. What you need to do is make him shut up for good. Buy him off, threaten him, I don't care. Okay, well, that we can do. We are talking to the guy. All right. We are taking on both missions. Good, now let me point out that bunker on your map. I'll circle the place where the journalist is probably hiding as well. Pass our map to Artemiev and he draws two points on it, each with short phrases, radio bunker and rest stop six. Aha. Uh -huh. Those places are long forgotten, but I doubt you will get lost. Okay, well, we have to go then. Okay, that's excellent, actually. So, we have a new... A radio bunker. Ah, no, we already found that one. The radio bunker. And 
and uh, what? Which rest stop was it? I, for I forgot the 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 number. Oh oh. Ah, rest stop six. Okay. Yeah, six and radio bunker. Okay. So here. Well, that is doable. So let we, let us rather work for the guy. Because that will give us some opportunity for loot and other stuff, and he's even paying us. And then, yeah, I feel, I mean, we talked him down a bit and stuff, just, you know, for training purposes and entertainment purposes. And by the way, do we have some more merchandise, don't we? Let's go down into the catacombs, slash the canalization. And then from there, there here, we can actually talk to the smuggler, the other guys. I wonder why they always keep standing there. Well, but I guess it's like the pathfinding. They are thinking about the path they have to take. Fade, how is it going? Our fat bearded friend. You have 137 rubles. That is most likely not enough to buy anything that we have, which is very sad. We could sell you one axe, though. Yeah, but we don't. I think we should keep the, the axe actually, just in case. We need one for something. And yeah, we are also, well, I mean, we do have the pants now. So let's, yeah, actually, like you being a bartender. Here, yeah. Have a frying pan. That's actually good. We have several of them. That's good. You can keep the change. That's good. That's actually good. A boss can help you. Oh, no. Demian is only selling the forgetting potion. Hello, smuggler. How's it going? Show your stuff, please. Oh, yeah, you have some ammo. That's good. If only a limited amount. And then so we have 496. Is that enough for one? Ah, well, I mean, the prices are also pretty good with him, but... Let's not throw our money out of the window. Uh, well, but I guess... Oh, yeah, well. Let's give him the, the shotgun. So this guy is like our shotgun buyer, basically. Well, we only gave him one. Yeah. There. Like so, thank you for the business. And then we go up here. So that's good. We just have to check out those two locations. Let's run over there. just such a pity that uh, we can't sell anything uh, to Abraham like at better prices I mean like selling anything to him would be a catastrophe anyway because he's such a good haggler ooh why, why Gerta why are you making ooh if everything okay with you well, yeah. then have a nice day. It's kind of a pity. Oh, let's go over here and look into the garbage. It's kind of a pity that... Uh, that, uh, yeah. What did I want to say? I have no idea. What is the pity? I forgot. Because I was thinking about going through the garbage. <laughs> but it's fine. So here, some milk into the trunk. 
Can we go down there? Yeah. Why is this dynamite not stacking with the others? I wonder. Hunting rifle goes there. So now we are in adventure mode. We are putting everything away. We can carry more stuff as well. Diesel. How much diesel do we have? Gasoline is at 66. 44 diesel. And there are no different stacks of diesel. Okay. Exogen. Alex. There and there, like so, and that's fine. Okay, good. Leaving. Saving. And that, my dear fellow survivors of the apocalypse, concludes this episode. We had a nice road trip. We sold a lot of stuff. We talked with a person we knew about for a very long time, but never had access to. And now we have two jobs. And we are getting closer to restoring a very nice car for Otrad Neue. And well, that is basically our favorite little village. Uh, and it is our joy to help them. Well, and uh, let's see. By the way, I wonder, can we actually talk to this guy and talk about his mutation? And see what Alex is actually saying. How's life in the city? If we may ask, what sort of interesting places can we visit? visit? Ah, no, it's not the... It's not the guy, actually. It's just the guard. Where's the... Where's the guy with the uh, mutated legs? I wonder... So I bet that... I bet that Alex has some... funny line somewhere. Well, there's nothing here, though. Well then, anyway, so thanks for watching. I hope you liked this episode. If you liked it just a tiny little bit, please consider to click the like button and the subscription button so you never ever miss an episode again. And help me out a little bit, doesn't cost you anything. Just the effort of clicking your mouse finger or your touch screen. Thanks for watching again. See you next time. Bye bye.